Hi everybody, this is Austin from Craft Crickets in Eugene, Oregon. Welcome back to our video series, Introduction to Cricket Farming. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the brooder setup, or the environment that the crickets are going to be living in. So, the first part of this, we need to talk about the actual physical container itself. When I do my cricket farming, both commercially and in my backyard, I like to use a plastic tote like this. This is a 30 or 30 gallon plastic tote that I got from Walmart.com for about $8. But you can find this at pretty much any big box retailer or hardware store in your town. You're going to run you anywhere from eight to twenty dollars. Uh, I like this. First off, the thirty gallons to me is about the smallest size that you want to have. You could go smaller, uh, but I don't think you're going to get as good of an output because you're going to be having to use much of your space just for the food and water, which would be very little space for the crickets to let in. Also, when it's smaller and lower, it's easier for the crickets to jump up and. We don't want to have too many escapees. We would actually prefer to have zero. And so I like to have something that's a little bit taller, a little bit more difficult for the crickets to get out of. I also like these plastic coats because they're nice and sturdy. They're not going to break. Crickets can't bite through this. And what's also very important is it's easy to clean. So you're going to have to be cleaning this frequently. At every single life cycle of the cricket, you're going to uh, take everything out and clean it so that the next generation has a clean environment. If you fail to do so, there may be some sort of viruses or bacteria left behind that can get your new generation of crickets sick. And so it's important to have something that's easy to clean. Uh, and I guess the last point I want to make on the container itself, I like this because this is just one solid piece. It isn't multiple pieces that have been fastened together. I've seen people make things at home that were very lightweight and cool to work with, but they fasten them together and just the smallest cracks um, form between the two joints and that was enough for having a lot of crickets escape. So this is something that it's pretty hard for crickets to escape. It's easy to clean, and it's also very readily accessible. You can buy this you know, in just about any pound in the United States. Now, uh, when you buy one of these, another thing I like about it is it comes with a nice lid. And um, the lids just snap on nice, and you can tell when it's on it does it go snap. And um, I keep my lids on my bins when I race the crickets as a way to contain them. And you can see this is one sort of setup I've done. All I've really done is I've cut a hole, and this is about nine inches by 12 inches, and uh, stapled some aluminum screening uh, onto the back to provide some air and some ventilation. Now, it's very important that the crickets get ventilation. You need to have some side of holes, otherwise they will die, the airflow won't be good, uh, you may be getting up a buildup of condensation, and it doesn't create a good environment. I have found that on a 30 gallon tote like this, a 9 by 12 square like this is pretty much the smallest you can go in. Um, preferably, you would go a little bit bigger than this. This is just the one I had uh, around here. As for the screening, uh, this is aluminum screening. Uh, if you go to a Home Depot and you look at the window screens, they'll have multiple types. Make sure you get the aluminum one. I've tested other types, and sure enough, the crickets can eat through them. This is the only one I've found so far that the crickets haven't been able to eat through. Uh, it's also important to make sure that the screen is pretty uh, close knit together because if the holes are too big, the crickets will get through it when they're really young. Um, so the, the screen is very important. Some people uh, just drape the screen over the top of their bin, and, and that works, but it's inevitable that crickets are going to get on the screen and be able to walk on it. And uh, if you don't have a lid that snaps in, They'll just be able to walk on the top of the screen and then walk out of the bin. So uh, I do this. There's no right or wrong way, but um, it, it tends to work very well for me. Going back to the brooder itself, just want to show some empty shots of what this brooder looks like in the inside. Now, an important thing to call up is that along the top, I run packing tape. This is because this material is something that the crickets can't climb up on. Uh, the plastic wall, they can climb up on, but the packing tape uh, is too slippery for them. So if you had this full of crickets, a lot of crickets would be excited by the wall, would climb up with it, but they would stop at the packing tape and prevent them from getting out over the top. You can see I run plastic packing tape all around the corners so that um, crickets don't get stuck in this top part right here and uh, jump out from there. And another important thing I want to call out with the packing tape is make sure that you firmly push down the side of the tape and check so often because the tape 
will come undone, uh, especially if it's hot and humid. The tape will lose some of the stickiness. And if a little gap will form up, it's a guarantee that crickets are going to find their ways in that gap. Now, just because of the gap doesn't mean that they'll escape, but you can probably imagine what happens when there's some tape that's not loose and uh, a cricket climbs its way into it. The cricket's going to get stuck and it's going to die. Uh, and it is inevitable if you have a, any loose tape, crickets will find their way in it. I've had tape come loose before and come back and see literally thousands of dead crickets uh, that have gotten stuck from the tape just in the course of the night span. So it's important that your tape is spread down during from one. Okay. So once we have our toe, and once we put the tape around it and we have a nice lid, you need something for the crickets to live in. So they really like something with surface area, uh, something that gives them some shade and something that they can hide. Uh, around your house, there's probably plenty of things you can do. Uh, a common thing that people like to use is just your old paper towel, towel rolls or your toilet paper rolls. Um, these are nice and shadowy. The crickets like to go inside. They like to climb around the top. They like the surface. They can drip on it. Save a bunch of these. And you can just put a stack of them inside your bin. That works. Uh, another thing I like to use is just uh, egg cartons. Egg cartons are nice and fibrous, and they create a lot of surface area, a lot of room for the crickets to go and hide. Um, if I just gave them um, just a plain flat thing, you're not going to be able to fit as many in the same amount of space. So I like this, save your egg cartons. I actually have all my friends uh, save their egg cartons for me, uh, because egg cartons can get pretty expensive if you were to try to buy new egg cartons for all your crickets. So um, recommend that you recycle them. And uh, the other thing that people like to do is use the sort of the cardboard dividers that you might see in a, see in a case of wine. These are great uh, because they also have a lot of surface area because they're stacked in, in multiple directions. And these are great too because it's easier to get the crickets off of them. So when you're harvesting, uh, it's a lot easier to get crickets off a flat piece of cardboard than to get them off of an egg carton with a bunch of ins and outs. Now, if you're just doing this small scale at your house, it's probably not that big of a deal if it's going to take a few extra seconds to get your crickets off of an egg carton. But if you're doing this larger scale um, and you're going to be doing this a lot, you may want to think about doing the, the, the solution that takes the least amount of time. So aside from my egg cartons here, I also have uh, some of these larger egg carton cartons. These are the the six by six egg cartons that uh, a lot of the local restaurants have. Uh, so I got these from some local coffee shops. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to there's various ways I can stack these in my bin. I personally like to put them together, uh, sort of like like ends going together, because this keeps it close together, but at the same time it leaves enough gaps for the crickets to get underneath there and have pretty much plenty of space. If I was to put the egg cartons um, on top of each other in the same direction that they're always on, the gap isn't big enough for the, for the crickets to fit in there. So it's very important that uh, you have enough space for crickets to hide out of there. And they don't need a ton of space. You'd be surprised how much they'll thrive with just um, with a little bit of a gap. So uh, I have maybe six or seven egg cartons like this uh, in my bin. A couple ways. One, I can just put them in like so. The advantage of setting them up in this direction is that uh, when the crickets are living in there, they'll be pooping a lot. And this, the poop will fall and gravitate to the bottom. So that's a nice advantage of that. Um, but a downfall of this is that this is very high, close to the top of the bin. So there's probably only about three inches, four inches between the top of these egg cards and the top of my bin. And that's problematic because the crickets will you know, find their way to the top of this. And while they may struggle jumping from the bottom of this bin out of the top, when they're only three or four inches from the top of the bin, it's really easy for them to jump out. Uh, even if you have a lid on it, they'll find a way to jump out. For example, when you remove the lid to work with them, if you have a couple hundred crickets on the top here, they'll jump out. So, um, you could put it in the same amount of egg cartons, the same surface area, and just lay it down lower. I personally don't like this for what I said earlier, that the cricket poop will build up uh, in this setup. Um, 
So sort of the compromise that I do is I take these egg cartons and I cut them in half. I just use an X-Acto knife and uh, cut them so that they're about half the size, and then I stack them up as so. And that means that the, the, the poop can Inside your bin, you're going to need something for the crickets to drink their water out of. Now, water is highly, highly important. Uh, I actually dedicate a whole class, it's the next Imperial Cricket Farming video, to water and the different ways that you can deliver water to crickets. I highly recommend you watch that. Uh, so I'm not going to go too into detail. I'm just going to point out some of the things that I like. For me, the best luck I've had has been with just one of these little water feeders that like baby chickens would use or adult chickens I suppose would use. That you can get at any feed store. Uh, you can get them online for about five, six dollars. Uh, and they're they're great. I like it. They're they're pretty sturdy. They they don't tip over because they have a, a pretty wide base and they can hold a lot of water in here. Uh, so I like this. Sometimes you know before I bought a bunch of these, I would just use plastic dishes. Uh, plastic cups. Uh, I would recycle whatever I could find. Uh, my my pop bottles and cut off the top so that the crickets fit in into it. Uh, so you really just need some sort of container to that, that water can go into. What's important though is that you have a way for the crickets to get out of the water. And we'll talk more about that in the next video. But uh, I like something like this because with this setup, you probably only have to change the water once a week. So it'll take them a full week to drink all this water. And uh, it's great, it doesn't take up too much uh, surface area. So, okay. so we got the water in the bin, now we need something for food. And so again, you just need any sort of cup or any sort of dish that you want to put your food in. Uh, I just bought you know, a huge bulk amount of these foil 8x8 pans that people bake with. Uh, they're really just a couple cents each when you buy a bunch of them. So I like these. I prefer to keep my food in one of these instead of just throwing the food at the bottom of the brooder like some people do. Uh, I find that when you just throw it at the bottom, you know, it's just going to get mixed more with the poop and it clutters things up. And uh, if something does go wrong with the food, if the food goes bad, uh, which does happen that it gets moldy, uh, it's easy just to take this whole tray out and replace it with a tray of something clean as opposed to trying to grab it off from the bottom of the container. So, I like something like this, I put my food in it. If I'm gonna have both dry food and wet food, so for example, if I'm gonna feed the crickets some chickpea, which is the, the, the base of the diet that I feed my crickets, uh, but then I wanna give them some fruit and vegetables as well, I wouldn't put them both in the same container. I would actually have two containers um, because the, that wet fruit and vegetables will make the dry food moist and moldable for them. We definitely don't want mold growing with our crickets. Uh, you know, that will destroy the food and not be very good for the health. So I'm gonna put this in the bin as well. Crickets are great climbers and you can move around the bin really quickly. You'll be surprised once you put crickets in there. In just a matter of a few minutes, crickets are everywhere. Uh, however, they can't climb on all surfaces. That's why we put the table on the top. But they also struggle uh, to climb up out of the food dish and into the water dish. Uh, especially when they're little. When they're older, they can climb higher, they can jump around a little bit, but when they're little, it's really difficult for them to get into your food dish, depending what sort of dish you have. And so my solution is just cut up shreds of cardboard. Um, I just, yeah, any cardboard cut up, you can cut up any size. Some people just use the egg cards themselves. I use the cardboard as little rows or ladders to get around the bin. I put it some to the water, some to the food. Just make sure that it's on surfaces that the crickets can climb on. So if you set one end on the bottom of the bin, if you set one end on the egg curtain, we don't have those enough that the crickets that they can be able to thrive in. Those are some items that they come. There's one other thing that we would have, aside from crickets, um, at the later part of their life, and that would be a substrate for them to lay eggs in. Now, we're gonna have a whole talk about preparing a substrate and identifying what sort of substrate. But for this setup, just know that you're going to need some sort of space. I personally will go with the 8x8 pan as well for when I put my substrate in. Here's a, a pan with some peat moss in it. And for this, I simply just typically put my substrate on top of my cards. This is another
another reason why it's good not to have your A cartons all the way up to the top, because if the crickets are or if the A cartons are already at the top of the bank, there isn't any space for you to put this uh, a substrate in. So I consequently, I could use a smaller container and have the substrate down next to the food, uh, or I could swap the locations of the food and the substrate. So really, that's about it for setting up your brooder for crickets to thrive. Uh, what we discussed today wasn't the only way that you can set up your bin, but you will need those components. And that's about it for today. Thank you for watching part three of our introduction to cricket farming. Check YouTube for our prior shows. Part four will be posted soon and will be dedicated solely to water and to different ways that you can get water to your crickets. Uh, this is definitely a difficult issue that uh, I've struggled a lot with. But for today, that's all we have. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section and we'll respond in a short amount of time. Thanks a lot.